Now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good afternoon out there, everyone, and welcome to your number one source for Native American television news, Native News Today, coming to you from Alt Mulgee, Oklahoma, and the Muskogee Media Studios here at the Muskogee Creek Nation. I'm your host, Jason Salzman. want to welcome you all in for 30 minutes of great content. We've got a lot of things to share with you today, lots of things happening in and around Indian Country. We'll also have a special guest coming up. That'll be after our first break. We have an in-studio guest. We'll welcome Welcome in a member of our National Council, Ms. Dodie Warrington Barnett. She's going to be talking about some great things coming up with our schools, our education, something that they've really stressed with the National Council, always willing to be able to get behind those initiatives. So can't wait to share some of that with you. Also, uh, some news in the sports world that has to pertain to uh, Indian Country, Creek Citizens uh, uh, specifically. We have a Creek Citizen, Mr. Kevin Hill, who has been named the pitcher of the week in college baseball by the National College Baseball Writers Association. Now, Kevin is at Southern Alabama University, plays for the Jaguars down there, and he uh, is there by way of Tecumseh, Oklahoma, then he went to Seminole State Junior College here in Oklahoma, but he's doing a fantastic job now at Southern Alabama, and they actually, uh, in a recent game with Georgia State, uh, Kevin nearly threw a no-hitter. Uh, you all, you baseball fans out there know what I'm talking about, but it's sort of self-explanatory there. Didn't give up any hits, so um, until the ninth inning, which is a, quite a feat, but 15 strikeouts in that game. Wow, what an accomplishment. What a great game there from Kevin Hill, Muskogee Creek citizen. So we wanted to salute him, salute that effort, and he was saluted also by the writers of college baseball around the country with Pitcher of the Week honors. So great job from him. Want to uh, say congratulations to his family as well, all those that are back here in Oklahoma still that keep up with him, and we wanted to give him proper uh, props here on Native News Today. As as I said, uh, we've got lots of great things happening in and around Indian Country and here right at home in Alt Mulgee. As you said, I hope you enjoyed last week with us out by Loop 56 and you could see the College of the Muskogee Nation there in the background. Well, last week then Friday, they had their commencement ceremony, the, the graduation. We always love when it's graduation time around College of the Muskogee Nation because not only is it a chance to uh, support and publicize all the great things they're doing there, but students coming through the college graduating and for the first time, I think, uh, graduation was at the new student center. So that was something that was really cool. We'll show you uh, that a little, bit, a little bit later on in the program. We'll have scenes, uh, comments from the College of Muskogee Nation graduation ceremony. So lots of great things to get to, but we're going to take a break really quick, our very first break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in studio with Dodie Warrington Barnett from the Creek Nation National Council. We believe if you teach a man to fish, you can feed him for a lifetime. We believe that transitioning convicted citizens back into our communities enhances public safety. We believe that every citizen, even ex-prisoners, are important and are capable of change. We believe in reclaiming our citizens and investing them back into a culture that embraces healing and restoration. We believe in reintegration. I pledge to embrace and educate offenders in an effort to stop their abuse. I pledge to all women to love them, protect them, and teach them that violence does not belong in our communities and is not our tradition. I pledge to take full responsibility for myself and the women and children of the Muskogee Nation. I pledge to work courageously and audibly to fulfill this pledge for the rest of my life. I think like creatively I was just into drawing for a long time, like ever since I was a kid. It wasn't until maybe around late 2007, 2008 that I became aware of uh, 
the graffiti scene, it, it changed everything for me. You don't even really understand in the beginning what kind of journey it's going to take you on, but I think that in order to become great at what you do, it really, it really boils down to how you feel about yourself and how you feel about your own artistic creativity and your own expression. You know, I, I just, I think it, be, it comes from like a belief in oneself and pushing yourself to the limits as far as you can take it. Pumagasam gadat, ibufanga, nage adigat, punhayadi omega. Ajayi did it omis. Tayosnok, that's true. Throughout the generations, our elders have taught us to preserve, share, and more importantly, protect the abundant natural resources we have here in Oklahoma. We are the original environmentalists and protector of these resources. The Muscogee Creek Nation believes tribal and state governments must work together to ensure future generations will have clean air and clean water as the ultimate legacy. What is good for Oklahoma tribal nations is good for all Oklahomans. Remember, tribes are truly the original Oklahomans. It's more than just an associate degree. It's a life-changing experience. You'll see a lot of cultural features here on the campus. You'll see a symbol of the mound, which goes back to the history of, of Muscogee people as being in that Mississippian time period, that mound building society. That really welcomes our students whenever they first get here. The college in itself is beyond the building, is the people. They're passionate, very passionate about what they teach and it shows whenever they're teaching. The instructors and the administration, they really believe in their students here. After a couple classes, I began to notice that it kind of felt as if I were returning back to something, something that has been lost for like a long time. As I learned more about the history of my people, to discover that there were very many great people that did a lot of good things for their people, for their nations, and that those people were American Indian and Native American, it kind of brings out a sense of pride that was not really there before. There is a future for our people. For me as an artist working in a visual language, which is, you know, the clink at art, keeping the, the actual tongue alive is vitally important because it completely informs the art form itself. They say the seventh grader was unfairly benched from her basketball game. Her mother says the girl was forced to sit the game out to punish her for using the Menominee language at school. All of us, we're all over the world, we're waking up. It's a global indigenous revolution that is happening now. These are important times. These are important times and we're not alone. We're not isolated in our villages of Alaska. We're together. Somebody stood over me and said, what are you doing for your people? Our generation is the last chance, because if we don't do it now, our first language speakers will pass away, and our language will go with them. I 
ask people, what do you do if uh, somebody who's really loved becomes deathly ill? Do you do everything possible to heal that, you know, to try to find a way of getting that person's health back in balance? And welcome back to the program, and as I promised, we now have a special guest joining us in studio. So glad to have Miss Dodie Warrington Barnett. It's always great when we can have members of our leadership from the executive, legislative branches here at Muskogee Creek Nation. She is sitting on the current National Council of our Muskogee Creek Nation. Dodie, thanks so much for being with us today in the studio. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I think it's the first time on the program, right? Correct. Okay, so the initiation is uh, we throw a bucket of water on you and you're done. So yes. get ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> it was on my bucket list. Oh, oh, nice. She gets a point for that pun. That was wonderful. Well, the reason we wanted to bring you in today is talking about some of the things that the council has been doing lately. But specifically, uh, one of the things that you've really championed is getting uh, STEM education into some of our schools. Now, S-T-E-M. Now, I'm thinking science, technology, help me out. Engineering, Engineering and math. Engineering and mathematics. Yes. Four things that I was horrible in in school. <laughs> now, but uh, STEM is something that, you know, nationwide, a, a lot of schools are doing more of. They're doing uh, fun ways to get students involved in those things that you said, science, yes. mathematics, whatever. Um, and, and it's something that you brought uh, to the council. But talk a little bit about that. What, what really got you started? Started and what made you want to bring that to our schools? Oh, wow. Well, I think being a mother, mm -hmm. I have four children, and all of them seem to be just inherently stronger at math and science than mm -hmm. they are at other subjects. And so it's always been a passion for me to make sure that they excelled in those areas. Sure. But also because of just exactly what you were saying, there's tons of people, specifically native people, if you look at the test scores, that mm -hmm. don't feel confident in those areas. Mm -hmm. And I think that we excel at those areas naturally. Mm -hmm. We were a STEM-based people. We right. were astrologers. Yes. We um, invented the first medicines mm -hmm. that you know uh, we introduced to the Western world. And so we're very STEM-based, yeah. conservation. Right. I mean, the the know-how and, and the will is there. Yeah. Um, it's just that getting that connection from the kids realizing that what they're doing in our history and where we come from is STEM related right. and translating that into a modern educational experience. Sure. So um, being asked to be a part of the Tulsa Regional STEM Alliance Advisory yes. Council, that's a mouthful, TRSA. <laughs> um, Partly, the first involvement was getting the sponsorship for the flight night event mm -hmm. from the nation right. and just seeing how that grew and how it snowballed and what exciting projects that we've been able to bring into the Tulsa regional area and specifically their commitment to bringing STEM education to rural areas because mm -hmm. our rural schools just don't have enough funding sure. and access to the same opportunities as we do in the urban areas. Yeah. Um, most recently we were able to bring in the U.S. Naval Academy mm -hmm. to do professional development at Henrietta Public Schools, right. which it was really exciting um, yeah. to see the kids interacting with the teachers mm -hmm. and with the um, U.S. Naval Academy personnel. They brought their teachers and they also brought uh, midshipmen with them so cool. the kids saw someone that was very close to their own age doing very these amazing cool. STEM related activities and um, several of the younger people there was one uh, young lady in particular that was very articulate when we were eating lunch together and she said that if every day was like that day of professional development had been, mm -hmm. how many more students would you be able to attract to stay in school and to excel in school? Yeah. She said that the two hours they worked that morning felt like 20 minutes because it flew by yeah. so fast yeah. and that they were so excited and so immersed in the activities that they were doing. Well, yeah, and you know, you could see the students, um, and, and shortly here in just a moment, we're going to show what you're talking about, but you could see the students really getting involved. It's something that really stimulates them. I love that you tie it in with the way that we were just as a any pre 
uh, even pre-contact, talking yes. about engineering. I think about our uh, advanced irrigation systems, mm -hmm. how they've been modeled after other things, and uh, the way our communities were set up and things like that. So it's something that's definitely been a part of the history, and it's wonderful to see it being brought back in modern times. This also segues into some more opportunities that we're going to be having. I know you're really excited, as I am. I can't wait to show our viewers about the bot ball challenge coming oh up gosh. at the Dome. Our Muskogee Dome is going to be hosting, um, you know, this bot ball. And, and explain that for, to some people out there that may not know exactly what that's going to be. So the nation, our education department, um, we partnered with the bot ball Institute. Mm -hmm. They are out of Norman. Mm -hmm. Their curriculum was actually invented by a professor at OU, and um, it's administered by the Kipper. Uh, people, mm -hmm. they're nonprofit, um, or I guess you could say for a purpose, mm -hmm. as yes. opposed to nonprofit. Right. And they actually um, teach children to use computer programming in the C language, which obviously I'm not a computer programmer. You can tell by the <laughs> way I'm wording this. Yeah. Um, but the kids actually use C programming to program autonomous bots to do certain functions. Right. So they can program the autonomous bot to move six inches forward, back up four inches, turn left, move yeah. six inches forward. And I mean, it's amazing what these kids uh, can do. And they're young kids. Right. Um, these people were told that children were not capable of computer programming. And we have kids as young as third grade yeah. that are actually programming, true computer programming language, right. just like the adults use. And um, it's actually really excited. The kids, Tulsa, Jay Hester's running a program in Tulsa Public Schools, and she said they've actually had to extend their hours because the kids don't want to go wow. home at the end of the session. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so cool. And, yes. and like I said, I mean, you, I can echo that. My two-year-old, Sophie, you know, she'll go through the iPad, and I'm just like, I can't even do some of this stuff. She, she's getting into different apps. I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen here when she's a few years older? But um, that is May 6th, I believe. Is that um, May 9th. 9th, 9th. Yes. 9th at the Muskogee Dome. That'll be something to look forward to. Yes. Um, and, and we're excited about that. We're going to be over there. So it'll be something we can share with our viewers here on Native News Today. I know that they look for us to do exciting stories, things that are a little different sometimes. That'll definitely be one of them. And I know that we're looking forward to it. And as we discussed earlier, the STEM program as you said, uh, the Naval Academy teaming up to bring that yes. to our rural school here, uh, close to us here, Henrietta High School. Lots of native kids in Henrietta, you know, lots of our Muskogee Creek Nation citizens too. So it's a wonderful opportunity for them. Yes. We went down, we're able to highlight this great program, and we want to show that to you now. And Dodie, thank you so much for being with us today thank in the you. studio. It's great it. having you. Yes. have invited the Naval Academy to come and put on a STEM workshop for not only our teachers, but the teachers in the surrounding area. And uh, STEM is basically training in science, technology, and uh, mathematics. And it teaches teachers to be more hands-on, more project-based. Uh, to help students learn how to view uh, educational opportunities in science and math and technology and, and with, a, with a more hands-on approach. It's, it's highly engaging. It's, uh, the research shows great efficacy for learning with these students and with this type of program. And with the passage of the bond here in Henrietta just a couple of months ago, um, we're going to be building a brand new science STEM building just south of our current location now by our middle school and we'll be implementing a STEM program here at the high school. What's really exciting about STEM is the very programs that engineering firms all across America use. That'll be the same uh, computer program that our students will be able to utilize here at our school too. science, technology, engineering, and math because frequently there's an underserved population in the careers and people don't have the technical training that they need to get to where they could be in life. And so we're trying to start that education here at a young age versus them getting to college and having no background whatsoever in it. Academy is awesome.
awesome because we have a plethora of resources that are available to us and we're not fighting with graduate students to use those resources, which is very unique to our program because at most large universities, they're fighting with graduate students and graduate students are either teaching their classes or are taking precedent on equipment. So we have actual professors who all have masters or doctorates in their field who are the ones teaching us the subject material. huge fan of reading and writing when I'm assigned to do it. I'm all reading and writing on my own terms, but not on like an English department terms. Uh, I didn't want to do math with a lot of letters. I liked the numbers and um, I wasn't big into like econ or anything like that. So it kind of pointed me towards chemistry. And for a long time, I really wanted to be a doctor. And so that's one of the easiest routes to go. Okay, and that, that'll give you a little bit of a glimpse of what we're wanting to bring to the rural schools in and around the Muscogee Creek Nation boundary there, the STEM program, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And once again, thank you so much to Dodie Warrington Barnett for stopping in with us in studio and chatting about that, and as well as the Bot Ball Challenge coming up. Definitely look for that coverage on Native News Today. Well, as I said in the opener, the College of the Muscogee Nation recently celebrated their latest commencement ceremony. Lots of graduates coming through wearing the cap and gown. I think they're uh, allowed to wear feathers and, you know, uh, support their heritage in their cap and gown. Not all students are allowed to do that. We'll have some of that on Native News Today in the coming weeks. But uh, it's one of those things where we love seeing the college have a class come through, a new fresh crop of students. It's something that, you know, when we first had the idea for the college, you know, you wanted there to be uh, lots of students coming through residential places, a place that has that campus feel. It's really all tied together now with the student center, the housing, more and more students coming in, more and more people wanting to get involved, wanting to know what the college is about take their courses there, and we're just so proud to have the latest commencement ceremony and proud to be able to show you some of the comments, highlights from that day here on the program. This is our seventh graduation, and we've had probably about uh, 200 graduates. It's been wonderful. I consider this college literally like a second home. Faculty is very friendly, very helpful. Um, no matter what kind of questions you have, they'll answer them to the best of their ability. Well, the message is our students proving that they can uh, be successful in, in college. first time they've actually been the majority. They, they're being taught by native instructors, they see native administrators, see native staff, and they see na native classmates. If they don't, if they do not go on to uh, college, then they've been employed by the tribe or other tribal governments. I was the 10th employee hired back in 2009. Now we have 48 full-time employees, two part-time, uh, 12 adjunct, and 12 work studies. So look at the jobs that it's, that it's created. We've hired back uh, a few of our graduates. They move on here and they go to OU, they go to OSU, Tulsa. And, you know, I always believe if they would just show up that, that we would, uh, that they could be successful. You know, and, and, and having that environment and the culture and the language. It's a very high honor to be asked to speak at graduation. To me, it means that I have finally done what I thought I was going to do. I've finally molded my life around the core values of this college, and to be asked to be respondent means that I have embodied at least some of those. I've got a ways to go. I'm going to take a little bit of a break before I continue my education, then I'll go for my bachelor's and then my master's, hopefully, and hopefully end up working as a librarian for the tribe or another tribe. One of 
of the few tribal colleges that went in the nation. And so uh, I think we offer a good uh, uh, education for our students. And that'll wrap up another episode of Native News Today. We certainly hope that you've enjoyed our program this week. We sure enjoyed bringing it to you. Lots of great things to share, lots of wonderful information. I want to thank once again our National Council member, Ms. Dodie Warrington Barnett, for stopping by in studio to talk about science, technology, engineering, mathematics, affectionately known nationwide as STEM education program. And I uh, want to thank her for the initiative, the foresight, to be able to bring that to some of our rural schools here at the Muskogee Creek Nation, starting with Henrietta, and want to thank Henrietta Schools once again for inviting in Native News today to be able to show you some of that at their school. I know it's really going to catch on and uh, be something that we can be very, very proud of here within the Muskogee Creek Nation boundary. Also, definitely check out the Bot Ball coming up May 9th at the Muskogee Dome, give you a better idea of some of this STEM education in action. So that'll be a great uh, uh, that'll be a great event to look forward to and we'll definitely have it for you here on Native News today. Also want to say a big congratulations to all the graduates from the College of the Muskogee Nation. It's just so nice to see it still going strong and, and growing with each year in students as well as infrastructure, lots of things being ha uh, happening popping up on the campus out there, student center, uh, residential life. So it's really neat to see that college flourishing and having more and more uh, graduates each year and to be able to highlight that on the program. Also want to thank all the administration there, Dr. Bible, Dr. King, all those folks for letting us come in and film the graduation and be able to share it with our viewers here on Native News Today. I want to tell you about some of the stuff we have coming up in the next few weeks on the show. Uh, get your golden tickets ready. I don't know, this is a shameless uh, little pun there, but get your golden tickets ready. We're going to take you to the only Native American chocolate factory in the United States. It's right down in Davis, Oklahoma, operated by the Chickasaw Nation, Badre Fine Chocolates. We had a chance to go into the factory, put our hair nets on, really get our hands dirty, get our hands chocolatey. No, we did on the way but home, that's for sure, but we won't go into all that. I made a fool out of myself with all that chocolate, and I was running around here like a chicken with its heads cut off. So um, it was a lot of fun to go and do that. I cannot wait to show you guys the feature on that. Also, a local football team, a female football team, uh, very unique. We have some Creek citizens in that, on that team. We'll be spotlighting them too as we uh, go on with our next few episodes of Native News today. So uh, we love it when you can catch us on CW, catch us on KSBI in the city. We love to, uh, for you to go to our online channel too, YouTube. Check us out there, Muskogee Media Native News Today. Twitter, at Native News Guys, Facebook. See what we're doing throughout the week. Keep, what, keep up with us on all of our social media outlets. So for everybody here that does a great job on the show, We'll see you guys next week.